can anyone everyone hear me from the back it's clear great so this is my first big time conference talk so i hope i won't bore you to the death uh, anyway just pardon if things get bored right <laughs> oops that's not a good start all right okay so the topic uh, for this presentation is embracing static web my name is lakshan perera uh, so some of you may have already seen my blog it's laktech.com and you can also follow me on twitter at laktech and i am from here uh, this is sri lanka so i'm from sri lanka actually uh, it's a very beautiful tropical island so uh, surrounded by nice beaches and friendly people with all is sm the smiles on their faces okay and a lot of great scenery around like in sri lanka you might know the world's best tea is produced in sri lanka so a lot of tea estates in the hill country in the upper part of the country and it's really beautiful like have you any of been been to sri lanka like how how many of you have been to sri lanka none of you okay come on make it the next trip to sri lanka so it's uh, you may experience this beautiful tropical island so and here this is how they make tea in sri lanka <laughs> this is one of the uh, village side uh, cafeterias that's how they make tea <laughs> so it's pretty weird okay so yeah it's a paradise to live in uh, basically you might think yeah it's a paradise to live in like with all these natural beauty and the beautiful and very compassionate people it's really a paradise but as oops uh, that's that's not good but as developers yeah there are some gripes like the internet connections are not really good so uh, for me like my home connection is like 512 kbps so that's some of one of the, the disadvantages we have to live in live with it uh, and and also you might say the servers are cheap nowadays like almost everyone would say the servers are cheap but when it comes to sri lanka the costs are so damn high because the rupee value gets inflated compared to the us dollar it's not worse as in Singapore, zimbabwe but still it's really expensive like so for servers like for every year like we are spending more and more to the servers without any gain in the performance or the uh, memory so that's some of the stuff like as a developer we have to uh, Live, live with it like so that's one of the disadvantages in being in that part of the world compared to us or as in here in zimbabwe so sorry in Simb uh, singapore <laughs> so but these constraints do help uh, to create innovation so most of my work based on these constraints because of these constraints that inspired me to work on this stuff i have already created so that's one of the advantages of being in a different part of the world from the rest like most of the majority of users are like so the web or the internet we experience is quite different the experience we have in sri lanka or in that part of the world is quite different from what you experience in us or uh, singapore or the other developed nations so uh, I started creating uh, websites back in 1999 when I was a 13-year-old kid. Uh, and at that time, I didn't have an internet connection at home at all. So I barely got to know there's a way, nice way of uh, creating websites so that I could share whatever the stuff I have done with the others. So I want to try it out. So I found a couple of tutorials. Uh, I don't know how, like maybe from a friend or someone. So that uh, gave me the basics to create a website using HTML and CSS and stuff. Uh, but then I didn't have an internet connection at home, so I need to uh, find a way to publish these sites. So uh, my father luckily had a connection at his office, so I, uh, he used to sneak me into his office at the weekend, so I could use the internet. So uh, at the, uh, there I found this amazing website, so which uh, allowed you to publish uh, whatever the sites you create it's called geocities <laughs> how many of you have uh, used geocities <laughs> so it it was like a magic for me those days so you can basically create anything in html css or use javascript and then you can just publish it with the file manager to geocities so you didn't really need to have an internet connection at your home or in a computer so anywhere uh, where, where you have an internet connection you can go there and upload uh, your content to uh, GeoCities, so and it just worked. So it was pretty impressive for me, though the size uh, we created back then would 
<laughs> would have looked like crap compared to today's. Uh, but still, it was a nice entry to uh, the world of web development. Uh, I think GeoCities contributed this upbringing of a lot of people into web development. So there we hope them <laughs> a lot. Okay, so fast forward to 2012. Okay, so what do we have today? Like most kids starts with iPhone. Every, everyone has access to iPhone. So what they do is like you don't need not to have your personal home pages. You create an account with Facebook or Twitter or Tumblr or that's it. Like so, uh, basically you just have the access uh, to the web without even knowing, uh, without even having to know HTML or CSS. So that's in kind of way it's I ironic. I feel like at back in the day, as kids we had the opportunity to play with HTML and CSS, which allowed us to uh, groom an interest on the subject and today it's just you have uh, the UIs to just change the colors or just change the profile picture that's all they offer so it's kind of ironic and kind of weird how the things have changed for the past couple of years uh, but let's uh, forget about the kids but think about us as professionals how do we create websites today uh, what are the tools we use to create websites basically uh, most of us, I think, uh, most of us, if uh, when it comes to creating a website, would uh, simply use WordPress. How many of you have used WordPress? I think almost everybody. Ah, okay, cool. So yeah, that's that's kind of the de facto way of creating a website uh, for the last couple of years. If you want to have a, your own blog or something like that, you would just create your own WordPress setup. But that involves like I don't know why this text I've got. Okay. All right. Uh, anyway, like uh, that involves a couple of steps. So, so basically, you need to set up Apache, and then you need to set up MySQL, and just try to say okay. Uh, I'll just carry on. Okay. Uh, then you need to create do your templates in PHP. That's kind of sucks because you have to mix all the PHP tags within HTML, and uh, there uh, there you go. Like you, uh, once you have created your templates and these. Uh, Core, uh, core of your site, like where we have to insert the content. So, for that, you have to use something like the uh, YCV editor, which works on your browser. So, it's really crappy. Like, when you give it to your clients, they would just insert a couple of dumb tags, uh, just uh, hit, hit the uh, YCV editor and break your markup, and Twitter and your site into crap. So, that's kind of irritating. But most of all, uh, the real gri gripe with WordPress I have is like, it has con constantly it has security uh, has security vulnerabilities it has constantly released security updates so if you miss one of them like you are doomed so that's one of the pathetic situations with wordpress running a blog or your own site with wordpress that's one of the biggest disadvantages i have seen like i had to experience that couple of times myself uh, i had one of my my own blog was hosted on wordpress that means a custom installation of wordpress and and suddenly uh, google alerted that the blog has been uh, inspect, uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, inspected with uh, f uh, malware so it was a uh, really uh, difficult situation like so uh, when, when you have something important running on WordPress and it's always uh, exposed to vulnerabilities so I thought yeah there should be a better way of doing this stuff rather than having uh, to depend on WordPress so then I was looking for other solutions uh, which like uh, uh, gave me the opportunity to come across uh, Jekyll, which is actually a static site generator based in Ruby on, uh, not uh, Ruby on Rails, but Ruby. Uh, it's created by Tom Preston Vaughan of GitHub fame. So it really gave me this nostalgic feeling of the, uh, the GeoCities days, because you basically create your site on your client side, on your computer. So it's basically not the client side, it's on your computer where you ma manipulate the pages with your favorite editor and do the generation and then you can simply upload it to your any kind of a server. You don't even have to have Ruby or PHP running on your server to host the site. It's just basically static HTML pages and images. So you don't need any backend power on the server. So I basically hosted my site on Amazon S3. So that's, that's fair enough to host a uh, website like that. So. Jekyll kind of created a 
a new way for me like it, you gave me an ex uh, opportunity to explore a new way of uh, thinking of the websites like so rather than having to depend on a back end server uh, we could make use of the uh, our local environment to uh, to use the, our local environment to create our sites and then only use a server just to uh, who, uh, serve the files to the end users so that was kind of revealing uh, however i then i uh, tried to after converting my blog to jekyll i tried to apply the same principle to the other sites i was managing so uh, th then what i discovered was like all these uh, cmss at this time like even jekyll or wordpress they have this problem of thinking if everything has title and content because that comes from the mindset of blogs where we have just a title and a big b bunch of content so but in reality if you look at most of the sites they are not just the title or content because uh, let's see for example site like verge at a popular tech blog so in there you will see this is one of their reviews on nexus 4 phone like uh, there you will see you have images then video within the single uh, single content or a single article you have images then videos then list of comparisons and slideshows and external content pulling from the other sections of the site and and there are infographics which shows uh, charts or uh, the data in a different manner so all this stuff uh, combines together when creating a site like so it's not just the title or a content just title or a content it goes beyond that uh, which came to uh, which um, led me to the subject of content modeling and strategy uh, content strategy and modeling so uh, one of the popular uh, for, uh, uh, popular uh, promoters of this concept is Rachel Lovinger you may have seen her articles on a list apart she uh, wrote this uh, blog post which which uh, she shared this idea the content model helps to clarify requirements and encourages collaboration between designers the developers creating the CMS and the content creators so it actually means that uh, we have to work together as uh, most of the time what happens is like developers work on the CMS and designers work on the UI and the content creators will just dump the content but uh, in reality it, sh it should be the platform should enable all these three uh, groups to work together so current platforms we have we have a certain gap or a cer uh, certain uh, amount of a bridge between these people so that this bridge needs to be uh, this need to need these uh, three groups needs to be bridged so this problem was there so uh, this made me think more on the types of sites we create and uh, for basically if we look at the websites we can see there are two kinds of websites one is like user gener uh, sites powered by user generated content this is like uh, the typical web apps we create using frameworks like rails or uh, django uh, the content uh, is basically powered uh, through the users so uh, in facebook or twitter or in github uh, th this happens like the users are the creators of the content so you don't have really the control over the content and in this case uh, the content creators are the users so de the developer has not has not much of control of the uh, display and the presentation of the content but in the other cases which is more common among us like it's the editorial content the sites are powered through editorial content so it uh, it applies to your blog and to your company site or most of like digital magazines sort of sites so the in these kind of uh, environments the content creators are actually yourself or your team so in th in these environments we have much more control over the content so we can uh, focus on the important parts of that so uh, the but the problem is like the frameworks like rails or the uh, django or frameworks of that kind doesn't really uh, focus on these editorial content sites they are mostly focused on the user generated content so uh, we in this case we have the control over the publishing then okay, editor, editorial based sites are optimized for consumption like we f uh, give more attention to the permalinks and the responsiveness of the UI and content doesn't need to change between each request so even the user comes back and back again still the content remains the same so 
it's it, it doesn't need to be refreshed or it doesn't need to be rendered again and again on the browser so uh, or else on the server so uh, looking at these sites like however we can make them actually we can make them static or like we can cache them but managing such sites is a beta for most of the cases where we if we use a framework like rails to manage such site you still have to uh, have have to use the other components which really adds up to the uh, maintenance which is really difficult which makes it's not the ideal tool for the uh, problem so if we look at even if we look at the see uh, if you go back to the uh, cmss like wordpress uh, th their problem is like they are not as i told earlier they are not tailored for this kind of content so as uh, marshall McLuhan uh, mentions like at uh, in our age like the anxiety is basically because uh, we we've tried to solve the previous problem with the uh, previous tools like the tools we had uh, like five years ago so it doesn't really help in this case so i had to i thought like there should be a better way as developers we should be able to do static sites or the content based sites in, uh, the editorial sites in a better way so uh, it made me to think about our modern web development workflow uh, we use we we have the use of powerful editors basically we have we most of us depend on uh, some kind of a powerful edit like vim or sublime or whatever so we really like to work on our editors and we do have the access to sexier templating languages like mustache handlebars or jade or angular js rather than uh, doing em embedded H php or embedded ruby on your si on the uh, templates we use uh, logicless templates to do the templating this this has been a trend for a while so and also we like to use markdown uh, it's pretty awesome so with markdown you need not to depend on vice versa editors you can just uh, do the formatting with some basic syntaxes like putting two asterisks uh, to make the word bold or two underscores to make it italic and also we depend a lot on version controlling that today's project it, it has become the norm so using ver uh, version controlling has become the norm in today's projects so we have to enable all these options within our content sites as well so and the another thing is uh, we have to care about the page speed uh, today we give a lot of attention on making the web faster so everyone has the better access of the web so uh, page speed uh, there's a lot of attention on the page speed as well so we need to make sure our sites are optimized to be used in a, in any in, in kind of a an environment or a device like a mobile and this or else a different type of a connection but the, it loads correctly and efficiently so all this uh, background and all these uh, concepts brought me into creating a new framework uh, which is called punch uh, which i thought would solve the problems in a better way and let's see how it uh, nails these problems uh, which i mentioned earlier so basically in punch there are two main uh, pillars like one is templates and the other one is content so these are the two pillars which goes hand in hand so, uh, these are the uh, main pillars which holds the whole framework uh, when it comes to content content is structured as in json format so it allows anyone like or a designer to even if because it's human readable design or a content creator should be able to use it as well apart from the developers so it, it allows you to create a better structure for your content so in this case is unfortunately the content gets uh, uh, cropped up but it shows a json file uh, which uh, gives the basics like is this is this is the sh shared json file for a punch based project which gives the site title the tagline and host name and you can define the navbar which is navigation which is the which is the global navigation so stuff like that you can define it in the content uh, uh, j in the json format your content can be defined in the json format and uh, when it comes to the templates templates are basically consists of layouts and assets uh what you what you call as layouts is the uh, uh which uses to render the uh, content into the uh, templates so sorry sorry the content we use the content and create the web pages using layouts so layouts uh, can be in three different ways one is page layout 
which is for if, if you want to render a specific kind of a page like the home page of a site you can use the page layout and if for example like a sec, uh, for a sections like blogs uh, we can use the section layout which means now all the pages would use the same layout and we also have partial layouts for pieces which would be embedded on the other layouts like page and section so that's about the layouts then we have the assets assets are like can be static or pre-compiled static assets are mostly like images css or javascript files which we normally uh, create as it is but nowadays we have a trend of creating the pre-compiled files like we we want to use less or sas for styling and coffee script and java uh, coffee script or closure script or something like that for creating javascript so punch also supports these pre-compiled files when you include them in a template it will automatically compile them to the required format so let's give a try on punch since you have all have the wi-fi access you can just go ahead and try this if you have the node installed you can run npm install g punch which will install the punch as a module on your computer as a global module okay so i'll just go through it uh, anyway you can carry on with your work so uh, then you can create for to create a new site you have to run the command punch set up my site or whatever the site's name uh, then it will create a directory with your site structure in this directory you have to run the command punch s which will set up a local server and it will uh, work on the port 9009 so just if you uh, point your browser to localhost 9009 you will see a uh, quick hands-on tutorial which introduces you to the concepts within punch and uh, so to move on with the project uh, after you finish the tutorial you can uh, come uh, see how to work work in your project like there are th um, two main directories basically contains and the templates as I said and there's a config file as well so all your contents goes in the contents directory as JSON files and you can write the templates in mustache format by default it, it is the format that is supported so you can write the templates in mustache format and those have to be saved in the templates directory and you can do whatever the configurations you want to set for the site in the config uh, JSON file and uh, when you run the punches command it will actually generate the static HTML output and uh, save it in the output directory so once you have worked with your site uh, once you have done with your work you can uh, just upload this output directory to whatever the server you want and punch has a simple way of doing this uh, it has this command punch p which publishes the site to amazon s3 or other uh, other server if, uh, which you has HF sftp access so you can use punch uh, p command to publish your site easily and you have to uh, mention the server configurations on the config json file or else if you want to just upload your site to github or other kind of a git based setup you have to set up a git directory within your output file output directory and then you can push your code to github or any kind of a repository and uh, beyond that uh, as i said contains and the templates are the two main pillars but beyond that there are certain other elements which helps uh, punch to create the full kind of experience one uh, such thing is the helpers which has string helper the uh, then there are helpers like for the current page and there are helpers to insert third party snippets easily so this is a bit of an example of how to use helpers like first one is a string helper which capitalizes the title so this is this uses the uh, mustache format uh, mustache templating format but the temp uh, these helpers will work with any template uh, language a template language you are going to use so if you want to use handlebars you can use the handlebars syntax and the other one is for inserting a discuss snippet for enabling discuss comments on your site so you can just use the discuss snippet uh, directly on the templates and it will insert the snippet and you have to config and do the configurations again in the config JSON um, the another interesting thing as I mentioned earlier like we have to care about the page speed and to make the web faster so there one one of the things i have noticed on most static sites or most content based sites are like uh, they don't really uh, do the uh, minification and concatenation of css and 
and JSON resources. So they just serve the resources, but uh, this is uh, this is really uh, not good for the bandwidth, and it in, in decreases the performance of your site in the client side. So to improve that, uh, it is recommended that we concatenate and minify the uh, resources. So for that, Punch has a built-in mechanism called asset bundling, which uh, does the minification and the concatenation of your CSS and uh, JS resources. So for that, uh, there's a simple helper, like you have to uh, add your uh, all the files, all, all your CSS and J JS files in the config uh, JSON, and then you can call this helper. Uh, which will create uh, create the, the bundled uh, version uh, or else insert the bundled version onto your page like and it has the ability to fing fingerprint your bundles so that you won't uh, cache them for a long time or it won't it will easily uh, burst out the cache and replace the previous version with the next version so that uh, that hand punch handles that uh, for you and there's another thing called generator hooks which runs when you're creating the page or creating the site every time. So gen uh, generator hooks basically allows you to write hooks to do operations after creating a page. Uh, so for example, uh, there's a plugin called sitemap XML, which creates the sitemap for your site. Uh, after, uh, when, when, you after uh, when you create a uh, site, uh, it will generate the sitemap, which uh, you can use to uh, expose your site to search engines. So you can write generate hooks like that to uh, connect your site with other external services as well. Yeah, so Punch is opinionated framework, but it's fully flexible. You have the opportunity to remove whatever the bits and pieces in Punch and uh, replace it with your own implementations. For example, if you don't want the content handler in the default way, you can plug in your own content handler. So for example, like have without having the JSON file stored on your computer, you can use a web service to power your JSON, or else you can use a database which uh, gives the JSON output to power your site. So that, that fl flexibility is there. You can use whatever the content handler you want, or else if you want to uh, handle the templates in a different manner, if you want to use a different templating engine apart from Mustache or handler bars, you can write a wrapper for Jade or uh, an Angular JS, something like that. So that all that flexibility is there. So you can e just remove the pieces uh, available in Punch and include whatever the stuff you want. Or else you can extend the other stuff as well. Like you can write your own helpers. Uh, you can write your own generator hooks as well. So for example, uh, Punch blog is uh, such an example where it uses its own uh, content handler, which uh, ha creates a uh, blog. Uh, which is very similar to the setup in Jekyll. So uh, basically, it looks for a uh, con uh, blog post within the uh, post directory and creates the site. And it's uh, it, it's basically based on a blog content handler. You can check uh, check this from URL. You can if you go to this URL, you can easily check this. Um, there's the blog content handler, and there are two special helpers for creating the index page and the archives page, and there is also a special helper to create the feeds. So that's about the blogging environment. You can create your own blog with it, punch uh, by using that uh, project or the tip boilerplate. And there is another project for like f uh, this is another example called Fair Tweets, which lists one of uh, persons one one of the persons. Uh, favorite tweets in a page so for that it connects it has a content handler which connects with the twitter api and fetches the content so you can create a static page for with the fa uh, favorite tweets and just upload it somewhere else so if you want to re uh, refresh the content you can just run the uh, hand this handler again and do the updates and it uses handler bars for templating so it's punch is like fairly a new project and it's been around for like a couple of months so I do have a lot of ideas to extend this upon, and I need your support just by trying it out. Just you go try it out and see. Uh, give give your feedback. Uh, do criticize what you see is uh, good or wha what you see is as bad. So I need a lot of uh, feedback so I could move on this project to a certain level. I know it could help uh, people to make a better websites. So I hope you will check out and. Uh, fork the project and send pull request. I'm always uh, willing to 
get the feedback. So this is the project, uh, github.com slash lockpick slash punch. Go there and check it out. Right. I guess that's Thank it. you, Lakshan. Thank you so much.